This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Welcome back. March is Kidney Month and the Bahamas Kidney Association, PKA, joins the kidney community around the world in raising awareness of kidney health. During the month of March, their efforts are heightened as they encourage the public to take the necessary steps to keep your kidneys safe and healthy. And more importantly, the focus on bringing to the forefront those who fight this lifelong battle every day. President of the BKA, Tamika Roberts, highlights some of the amazing events in which the public can participate. As we celebrate another theme, kidney health for all, preparing for the unexpected, supporting the vulnerable, we ask the public to join us in a month of exciting activities. On March 3rd and 4th, we will deliver 300 care packages to our kidney heroes. On Sunday, March 5th, we will gather at Grace Community Church at 11 a.m. for worship. March 9 will be observed as World Kidney Day. Our kidney session this month will be held on March 12th at 4 p.m. and we have a special treat for those in attendance. On March 18th, we have our Fun Run Walk, which starts at 5.45 a.m. with a warm-up session at Goodman's Bay. We are encouraging all participants to wear green at this event. The BKA is a nonprofit organization established in 2021, building on the incredible legacy of Dr. Ada Thompson, who championed the cause for many years. The mission is to increase public awareness of the functions of the kidneys and measures to prevent kidney disease. Kalina Insurance is one of BKA's corporate sponsors. Maxine Seymour, Director of Corporate Communications, tells us why Kalina chose to partner with the Bahamas Kidney Association. Health and wellness is a key priority for Kalina. We're vested in the health and wellness of the citizens and residents of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. And so it goes without saying that we would be partnering with the Bahamas Kidney Association in its, in its activities for Kidney Awareness Month in March. And so we actually host the BK, and we're home to the BK, and their meetings are held at our facilities here on Collins Avenue, as well as we give cash support to them, and our employees are looking forward to wearing green each Friday in March to bring awareness to kidney disease. For us as an insurer, we realize that the prevention, early detection, and proper treatment of diseases really help people to live a more wholesome life and to really be able to function. For the entire month of March, BKA is encouraging everyone to wear green every Friday to bring awareness. The joint venture between LJM Maritime Academy, Urban Renewal, and other stakeholders has given children throughout the nation an opportunity of a lifetime, particularly youth from the inner city, to broadening their horizon for growth and development. Cadets at the LJM Maritime Academy got a chance to participate in the Bahamas Charter Yacht Show, further enhancing their knowledge about the wonderful world of boating. President of LJM, Brenda May Clare, spoke with JCN about the program. What we do is we offer several types of programs. We offer programs at the officer's level, which is, um, which is a three-year program, and that is for persons who have BGCSEs. But we now have the ratings program, which is being sponsored by Urban Renewal. You don't need to have BGCSEs or BJCs. What you need to do is, one, the only thing you need is passion and endurance to stay in this program. It's semi-regimented, and so if you're not disciplined, you will not stay in the program. And it is one that disciplines persons um, for the, the, the maritime area. Oh, the career parts are vast. Um, you have persons who can go as able seamen, they can be oilers, they could be wipers, they could be engineers, you need electricians on the ships, you need um, even, like, like I say, you need the hospitality area once you have the STCW, um, you need, what I should say, you need stewards, you need stewardesses, you need masseuse, uh, massage, um, everything. It's just a, it's, it's more or less a city on the sea. As part of the PLP's Blue
Blueprint for Change mandate to provide education and opportunities through urban renewal programs like LJM Maritime Academy, Minister of State for Social Services and Urban Development, Lisa Ramming, speaks to the government's commitment to, to ensure this part of their mandate is fulfilled. It started sometime in November 2022 and it's a four months program. It's an opportunity where, you know, we had committed as a government in our blueprint for change to provide education and opportunities for all. And similarly, those persons who live in the inner city and other communities, we would have recruited them. Um, we've got those who were interested. And so now today we have about 15 to 20 of them who are part of this program and the graduation is in April. And unfortunately, some dropped out around the wayside um, for different reasons. And so we have invested, the government has invested um, a certain sum, good much, and there's no price that you can put on education especially when you look at the long-term benefit. And so also, we have also provided, we pay for the breakfast and the lunch because it's a full-time program and these persons are not working. And so we want to keep them encouraged. We want to keep them energized because we want them to finish strong. The 20 cadets will graduate this April with endless opportunities in the maritime industry awaiting them. If you are interested in the maritime industry, the LJM Maritime Academy is available for all between the ages of 17 and 40 years old. For more information, you can find them on Facebook. A historic high school here in the capital is celebrating their 55th anniversary this year with its alumni association giving back to its current students as it always has. Aaron Bailey, formerly known as Highbury High, will team up with students who graduated and moved on in this year's homecoming initiative to refurnishing the school's gymnasium. Speaking with JCN News is Adrian LaRota, president of Aaron Bailey Alumni Association and chairman of the school board. We are coming into the 55th year of High Behind Arm as an institution. So we had our 50th anniversary some years ago, and we did that with a celebration, a big of grand celebration. So coming into our 55th year, we're going to be doing the same thing. Later on in, in this school year, we have our Pace of, Pace of Pride Day. Uh, then following that is going to be our annual homecoming, which is, you know, it's a lot, yeah, you may not know, but it is the largest gathering of alumni for any, of any school in the country. Okay, that's coming up in June. So there are a number of things that we're doing. We, we also have Impact Day, where we encourage our, our classes from the alumni side, along with our students, to draw into the community and actually uh, uh, assist some of the, old, the, 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 the homes for children or the indigent or, or, or that sort of thing. So there are a lot of things that we have. There's a whole year program that we do, and we try to do an activity every month. Uh, just you know, to keep our students interested, to keep our students motivated. And I must say the alumni of RMB is a very strong and vibrant organization. They provide a lot of support for the school and you know, as, and as Pace, we will continue to do it. When asked, Mr. LaRota spoke on the legacy of RM Bailey and Highbury High, particularly when it relates to the school's diverse alumni spanning over multiple decades. We just had uh, two, two, of our, two of our famous alumni from my class here actually uh, uh, Mr. Philip McKenzie and, and, and Mr. John Wilson, they were just made uh, uh, King's Council. Um, you know, so those are the caliber and level of people that we had who came from this institution. Uh, from our first graduating class, we have you know, people, our first head boy actually is Mr. Ernie Wallace, mm -hmm. uh, who is an awesome attorney. Uh, Ms. Larry Smith, she also an attorney. She was our first head girl from the school from 1972. You know, so you know, there are a lot of people came to this, came from this, this campus over the years. I don't want to start calling names because I will attempt it. I may forget some folks, but um, um, and they all are giving back. They all come to give back. I mean, we've done things like uh, you know, purchasing the bus for the, the school bus, and our initiative this year with yeah. homecoming yeah. is the rebuilding of this gymnatorium. Okay, that is our focus this year and for the 55-year initiative. We're going to rebuild this gymnatorium. Highbury High, established in 1968, changed its name to Aaron Bailey in 1972. Just some of the names that have walked through the halls of Aaron Bailey, Highbury High, include former cabinet ministers Brenzo Roll and Frankie Campbell, current minister of environment and natural resources Vaughn Miller, and Bahamian artist Antonius Roberts. This Saturday, tomorrow, February 25th, the Bahamas Agriculture and Marine Science Institute, BAMSI, their Climate Smart Advocacy Community Group will hold a beach cleanup campaign at the Montague Beach in 
Eastern New Providence from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Climate enthusiasts, concerned citizens, residents of the area, high school students needing community service credits, and all others are interested or who are interested, you're invited to attend. The group will meet and assemble at the Fort Montague. BAMSI's Climate Smart Advocacy Community Group was created in 2022 and meets virtually on a monthly basis. Anyone can join as it is free. Visit BAMSI's Facebook for monthly meetings dates and times. And finally, the latest on the University of the Bahamas sports teams. UB Track and Field, led by coach Edna Rowe, won the men's 4x400 relay at the recent St. Thomas University season opener. And they also picked up four second place finishes at the collegiate track and field meet. The men's 4x4 team of Dennis Williamson, Donya Roberts, Jackson Ozias, and Levine Joseph won in 3 minutes 23.18 seconds ahead of Lynn University that was in second. In the men's open 400 meters, Williams was second in 49.69. Brian Eek Strong took second in the women's 100 meters in 12.25 seconds and second in the 200 meters in 25.57 seconds. Joseph, who anchored the men's 4x4, was third in the men's 800 meters in 1 minute 58.5 zero seven seconds high jumper Jaden Brown was second best leap 1.70 meters that's five feet 6.9 inches meanwhile the rebuilding University of the Bahamas men's basketball team picked up a valuable or picked up valuable experience at the recent Skinner Classic that was last weekend in North Miami Florida the Mingos dropped all three of their games in that tournament losing to Florida Palms Atlantis University and Fort Lauderdale University the Mingos will play again this Saturday in the New Providence Basketball Association when they face Sand Dollar at 8 p.m. at the AF Adley Gymnasium. The Mingos sit in third place in the Vince Ferguson Division I with a 4-5 and five record. And Mingo's men's soccer team racked up a lopsided victory on Sunday in the Bahamas Football Association's league play at the Roscoe Davies soccer pitch when they beat the Baja Juniors 10 goals to 1. League play resumes this weekend. That'll do it for your JCN Evening News. Once again, I'm Jorino Saunders. Thanks for joining us. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.